In this video, we are going to discuss measure of central tendency. There are three types of central tendency in statistics. They are the mean, median, and mode. So first, the first one, mean, mean is about value. And median is about a uh, position. And mode is about frequency. So if you look at the formula on the left, you might be thinking, wow, that is a lot to read. Don't worry about this. Don't look at that right now. So let me simplify that for you. So let's say I have a set of data. One, two, three, four, and five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So it's pretty uh, simple a set of simple data right i am trying to find the mean what is the mean the mean is called the average value so one two three four five how do you find the mean first we add them up one plus two plus three plus four plus five so we have five values right so we are going to divide that by five so one that is equals to 15 15 divided by five that is equals to three so three is the mean of this data set so in this video the first video let's just focus on the mean first and then in the next uh couple videos i will make one for median and one for the mode so mean so now uh let's even though you add one more number to it so let's say one plus two plus one two three four five so how, how about this one two three four five we add a ten to it so one two three four 10 and 12 so there are six values so the mean is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 10 plus 12 so seeing you have six value i will just divide that by six so that's how you find the mean so you see a data set right so data set means a bunch of numbers what you have to do is you add them up you find the sum and then you take the sum divided by the size of the data how how many numbers do you see if you add up 10 numbers, you divide it by 10. If you add up 21 numbers, then you divide it by 21. So let's take a look at the definition of mean. The mean of a data set is the sum of the data entries divided by the number of entries. So the mean means average value of a data set is the best tool to study the central tendency because, so this one I would like to highlight that, the mean takes every data entry into consideration so in the expression that i just did i consider every single value right so that means in the second data set if you change that to a 120 and you change this one to a 120 then you change the mean right so the mean considers every single data entry to find the mean of a data set use one of the following formula we have one for population and one for sample. If the data is up, stands for the population, you follow that formula. If the data stands for sample, you follow that formula. I know that it looks like they are exactly the same. Let's go over the detail. For the population mean, this is called a mu. So up right below here, I have I explain every single letter. So this is called a mu. This is called a mu. Mu is a Greek letter. Mu is equal to the sum of x. This is called sigma. This little symbol right here is called sigma. The sum of x. Sum of x means you add up every single value in, in that data and then you divide it by n. Capital N means population size. Small n, lowercase n means sample size. So you add up every single number and then you divide it by the size of the, the data. And then the sample mean, this is also a symbol that we, we, we will be using a lot in statistics. This is called X bar, X bar. In statistics, the bar, so the bar above the X, the bar means average in statistics. Sum of X divided by lowercase n, the sum of all the observation divided by uh, the sample size. It is not a big formula, all right? But I type all of those for you too. Uh, understand the symbol because uh, in statistics so let's say after elementary stats right you want to take the next level by the time you get there they they uh, assume that you already you know you can uh, use you are very comfortable with using this uh, symbols okay so we have an uh, example right here so in an engineering class Thomas wants to get an overall average of 80 points or above this average depends on his score in seven major assignments the scores are listed below so he completed seven assignments and he got a score 
uh, for each assignment. So part A is I want you to calculate the mean of the data, right? So how do you calculate the mean? So to calculate the mean, this is what we are going to do. So for part A, I am going to add up these seven values, 58 plus 67 plus 60 plus 84 plus 93 plus 98 and then plus 100 and then divided by seven assignments, right? So the sum of that, that is equals to 560 divided by seven. So that is exactly 80 points. So if uh, these scores are true, the, the teacher didn't make any mistake, then his average is 80, right? So you encounter this problem all the time. Hey, what if I get a low, lower score on the final? Hey, what if I get a better score next time? Does that affect the average? The answer is yes. So this 80 depends on these seven scores, all right? If you change one of the scores, you change the sum. The sum change the mean, all right? So in part B, what if the first score is 28 instead of 58? So you have to change this 58 to a 28 to do the next part. So let's use a different color for that, for B. So instead of 20, 58, I have to change that to 28. And then the rest, no change. Plus 60, plus 84, plus 93, plus 98, and then plus 100 divided by 7. So what happened when you, if you lower the score by 30? So that means when you calculate the sum, this is no longer 560, you lose 30 points. So this will be 530. You still divide it by 7. So you use a smaller sum divided by 7. You are not going to get 80 anymore. So this is around 75.7. So that's the comparison is smaller sum, smaller. Smaller sum gives you a smaller mean. All right. And then in part C, what if I change the last three scores, these last three scores to all 100 points? Does that change the mean? Of course. Let's take a look. So in part C, we are going to do 58 plus 67 plus 60 plus 84 and then all 100, right? So plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. So this score gives you additional 7 points plus additional 2 points. So that means you get additional 9 points in the total. So instead of 560, so this time you get a 569. You divide it by 7. So this one is equals to 81.3. So now we compare this 560 and this 569, what do you see? You get a bigger sum, right? Then you get a bigger mean. So let's say you are taking a class, there are multiple midterms, right? So maybe three midterms. So after you finish two midterms, you might say, okay, uh, I am I am not very happy with my score right now. You ask your teacher, hey, if I get a higher score on the next midterm, does that affect my grade? The answer is yes, as long as the midterm, the category is based on those three exams. So if you get a higher grade, of course, that affects the average. If you get a lower grade, that affects the average as well. So this is how the mean works. You add up every single number and then divide by the number of data entries in the data set. So that's all in this lesson. If you think that is helpful, subscribe, like, share this out for me. I appreciate your help really much. I see you all in the next one.